So this question says that a block of mass, m, is being pulled along a rough horizontal floor with an applied force, t, as shown. The vertical component of the force exerted on the block by the floor is what? All right, so we have a picture. I'm going to put a coordinate system in here to keep us honest and remembering what we're doing. And I'm going to go around, and I'm actually going to draw the next thing. It's going to be my free body diagram. And I want to know what all the forces are on this block. So I have my picture. It says that this is a rough surface, so let's make it a nice little rough surface so we remember that it's a rough surface. It is a surface, that's good to know. So let's go ahead and start beginning. Well, we know that we have a tension force, our applied force T. I'm assuming that there's a string attached to it. They use T. My mind thinks tension when I see T. All right, so we have a tension force, and it's at some angle theta. We also have a downward force due to gravity, our weight force. The Earth pulls this block down. This block has some mass m. We know that the floor keeps the block from being pulled down, so there's got to be an upward floor, upward force exerted on the block by the floor. So the floor pushes up on the block, keeps it from falling through. That's why books don't fall through desks. The desk pushes up on the floor. And there's another one. If we're pulling it along in this direction, we're going to actually get, in this backwards direction, a resistive force, a friction force, because of the rough horizontal surface. If you weren't putting this one in your free body diagram, and this is pretty early on in Newton's second law problem, don't worry. We'll cover this stuff probably later, um, but friction you can get by without dealing with in this problem. Just for completeness sake, I put it down there. So they want to know in the y direction, what is our normal force? What is that force exerted on the block by the floor? So I'm using Newton's second law, I was writing this down, it says that a net force gives us an acceleration. Or our net force in the y direction gives us an acceleration in the y direction. And this is actually how we're going to solve this problem, because we know that the acceleration in the y direction is zero. It's not being lifted off the floor. It's not falling through the floor. It's being pulled along the horizontal floor, which means it's just coasting along. So now I have to add up all of my forces in the vertical direction. Oh, I forgot to label. I forgot to put vectors on these things, and I forgot to label that that's t. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to start, I'm going to start in the, over in this direction and circle around just to make sure I don't miss anything. So the first force I come to is the tension force. And I look, and this tension force has both a horizontal and a vertical component. So I want just the vertical component. It's a positive value because of what my picture shows, but I want the vertical component of tension. To that, I'm going to add, because it's positive, the normal force. This is the force that we want. I go over, I see my friction force. Well, my friction force is just in the horizontal. There's no vertical, so there's no adding forces in the y direction. And last but not least, because I'm in the downward direction now, straight down is my weight force. And this gives me an acceleration of zero. My net force is zero, which means I'm not accelerating in the upward direction. So I needed the case for a zero acceleration, or my net force has to be zero. All right, so let's rearrange some stuff. Um, I'm going to solve for the normal force. That's what I want. So normal force is equal to my weight force, which is mg, right? My weight force is mg, minus my tension force in the y direction. Well, this is a little bit tricky. I'm going to actually draw another picture because my tension force is a combination of two forces, a y and an x tension force. There's an x component to my tension force and a y component, and I want the y. So if that's my angle theta, I look at y is my opposite over my hypotenuse, so I get my weight force again, minus t my tension force, the actual value of my tension, times the sine of the angle. I checked my angle. I needed the opposite angle, so I get the sine 
is my value. So this is what equals my normal force, mg minus t sine theta. d appears to be my correct answer. 